What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him and the heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. If you serve a mighty God on this beautiful Sunday, second Sunday in the month of May, uh, this Mother's Day morning, you're not ashamed or afraid of the God that you served. If you're excited about the God that you serve who woke you up this morning and clothed you in your right mind and you have the activities of your limb, if you're excited about it, will you do me a favor this morning and put your hands together and give God your best praise in this place? Those of you in Facebook land, we welcome you all around the world that are watching. We invite you in to worship with us because we serve a true and risen Savior. We serve a God that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we could ever ask or think according to that which worketh within him, within us by our faith. Amen. We serve a God that has done so many marvelous things. He's allowed us to come in here again. And all these beautiful mothers that are here. Can we celebrate our mothers here? Yeah, that deserves a standing ovation for the one that carried you for almost 10 months. She deserves a standing ovation. You know, could nobody love a, love a kid like me but my mama, amen, and my wife, amen, amen. So I thank God for them today. I thank God for every mother I've can we get just listen? Test us and in, with this beautiful gift. Come on, we can celebrate the fragrance of the house. Come on, come on. Amen. We thank God for her this morning. Amen. And we want to wish all of the mothers around the world a happy Mother's Day. Amen. But we're excited today about what God has in store for us. I don't know about you, but I come to lift up the name of Jesus. Because I believe that when, uh, when praises go up, that blessings will flow down. If you're connected to the branch of Zion and you believe the same thing that I believe, let's get excited about worship this morning. Let's get excited about our Savior this morning. And... and Let's have church. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise in this place once again. Amen. Amen. Can we all stand for our response of reading? Our response of reading coming from Second Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. I will read the first and we'll go on together at the end. Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayer. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that that same faith continues strong in you. All together has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but a power, love, and self-discipline. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Good morning, St. Luke, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come this morning with bowed heads and open hearts. Lord, come thanking you for this another day you've left us with. For Lord, we know it's not because of our goodness, it's because of our kindness. We know it's only because of your grace and your mercy. We just come to say we thank you right now. Lord, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on the cross that we may have right to the tree of life. And for Lord, you know you said in your word, if we would knock, a door should be open. If we would seek, we should find. 
we would ask it should be given. Right now, Lord, we come asking you to bless us. Bless the only way you know we stand in need of. Continue to bless our homes. Bless our families. Lord, we ask the best of blessings for our kids as they go in about their many destinations they travel to and fro. We ask you to continue to put your own protection around them and go with them and stand by them and that you would lead them and guide them in the way in which you'd have them to go. And Lord, be quick to give you the honor and give you the praise. We thank you right now, Lord, for all that you're doing and all you're about to do in your life. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God.
and we magnify God today. This is the day the Lord has made and we've come to rejoice in what God has done. It is good to be in this place today. We're grateful to God that God has given us another day of life.
we certainly honor him in this place today. And we again, we say happy Mother's Day. Maybe, maybe y'all not hearing me very well. I, I say again, we say happy Mother's Day. This is a great day to celebrate uh, the women that cause us to be in this place and be alive. And we certainly thank God for each one of them today, and we want to celebrate them all day long and, and make sure they're special people. <laughs> today and we celebrate today uh, as we celebrate every Sunday our hub ministry that you can greet someone all over the place you can move out of your comfort zone today and greet somebody in the name of God can we do that this time Uh, this morning and to greet our, uh, give God the praise and honor that God deserve in this place. And I'm glad you all are smiling. That makes, that makes my job a little easier that you can smile. Amen. And we honor God in this place today. As we, as, as every Sunday, giving is a part of our worship. And we can certainly give uh, uh, through Gillify. We can do it through technology. You can do it also by sharing as you come in, you give you, as you come in, or you can give on your way out. But giving is certainly a part of worship, and we pray that you will certainly uh, obey the commandments of our God as it comes down to giving. Amen. I want to pray for certainly a mother, Pauline Tima, who's in the hospital, praying for Dr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, Chambers, and we're glad to see Dr. Chambers here today, and we're grateful for that. And then we're grateful 
certainly continue praying for the Walkers uh, and the Cleves uh, as they go through this, uh, the pain of losing their ch child. And certainly as we navigate through the pain, we continually to honor and praise God for life and having life more abundantly. If it had not been for God on my side, I don't know where I would be. But I'm grateful today that I stand here today to celebrate in the name of our God. As they come this morning with music, I'll come back with my little speech, and you can go and celebrate your mom. Amen. 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 My heart's torn in pieces is my offering. <laughs> Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Take me to the King. Truth is, I'm tired. All right, all right. All right, all right. Options are few. I'm all turned down, hurt and abused. Say it, say it. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Through the King, All right. leave me at the throne to gaze upon your glory to sing to you. Song. Help me, choir. Take me to Come on, is that anybody worship here this morning? Sing it again, son. Come on, everybody been there the one day? Come on, to sing. Come on to sing this. I'm tired. Yeah. Options of you. I'm trying to pray, God. But where are you? I'm all turned down, hurt and abused. I can't take what's left to do. No strength to fight, no tears to cry. Even if I try, my soul refused to die. Yeah, God, one touch will change my life. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart. Yeah, lay me 
Take me to the king. Yeah. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn. What do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like it's never enough? Tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? How do you deal with the shame? Oh, what do you do when you've given your all and it seems like it's never enough? You just stand, watch the Lord see you through. You just stand, God will tell you what to do after you've done all you can. After you've done all you can, oh, after you've done all you can, every mother in here, after you've done all you can, oh, after you've done all you can, after you've done all you can, yes. After you've done all you can, you just stand. Yeah. Oh, 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 you stand. God bless you. After you've done all you can, you just stand. Amen. We praise our God and thank you uh, this morning to those who are online. We're certainly grateful uh, for you this morning as you share uh, with us on this great Mother's Day. These are the heroes of our life. They, they are, you are, uh, you are special and we praise God for your uniqueness and your love for us, in spite of us, uh, they still love us. Even when they say they're not going to do it, they still going to do it. Amen. Even when they say we're going to cut you off, I ain't giving you nothing else, they still going to do it. All the while, they still going in their purse. Amen. And we thank God for our mothers on this day. If you get your Bibles hurriedly to uh, Exodus chapter 2, we shall all stand for the reading of the word as we, uh, if you can see the screen there today, we shall read that together. Uh, however, if you cannot, I shall read to you. About this time, a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. Verse 3 said, but when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus, reeds, 
and she waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds. The baby's sister stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the river bank. When the princess saw the basket upon the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. Verse 6 says, when the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. Uh, this must be one of the Hebrew children. Then the baby's sister approached the princess, should I go and find the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asks, verse 8, she said, yes, do. The princess replied, so the girl went and called the baby's mother. You may be seated. She went and called the baby's mother. I want to talk about today what a mama won't do. What a, what a mama won't do. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall on your people here today. We pray, God, that we'll walk away from here learning something from Jehokabit, Moses' mama. We praise God for her life because she will share with us something that every mother ought to be encouraged by her life for her son. Thank you right now, God. We give you praise and honor in this place. And we pray, God, for those who are sick, uh, those who are shut in, those who, God, are going through a difficult season in their life. We pray, God, that you'll bless them right now. We give you praise and honor in the marvelous name of of Jesus the Christ, and the people said, amen. amen. What a mama won't do. Amen. Harvard University came up with a study uh, that they could predict who the juvenile delinquents could be. Harvard University said, if you can predict, I say to Harvard University, and I say, if you can predict it, then why can't you prevent juvenile delinquency? They said in the study, they said one of the problems is that uh, the supervision of parents. Uh, they said that parents who supervise their children, parents don't let their children do whatever and whatever they please. That they put parameters over their children. That they have boundaries for children. That they will discipline their children. And I know that's a hard word because nobody wants to discipline their children. But my grandmother said, she said, if you don't, if you don't discipline, then they're going to discipline you. <laughs> uh, in other words, what she said is that if you don't whip them, they might eventually whip, whip you. Uh, so discipline really is an expression of love. Because if you love your child, then, then there will be discipline that goes along with it. Painful consequences of uh, disobedience. Because even God said discipline those who you love. If you love your child, then there will be some discipline uh, that goes along with it. And you need to know where your children are at all times. There ought to be some knowledge about your children and where they are. And I know they said they're grown, they don't have to report to you, but they still live with you. Uh, they're still your child. And, and, and the thing of it is, I've learned that uh, when they are not, when they are off in college, you don't worry as much. But when they come home, you want to, you try to, you, it goes or where they are, well, how are they doing because you want your child to be safe. So they, they, so they cannot do what they want to and cannot always do and be wherever they want to be. The environment that we are preaching in this morning, environment that Moses was born in. And Moses was born in a brutal and a, and, a, and a harsh, abusive world. He was born in a time of slavery where certain things he could 
and could not do. His dad's name was Amram. His mother's name was Jochebed. His sister's name was Miriam. And he had a brother named Aaron. Y'all keep up with me now. Because understand, he was born, he was born in a difficult season of life. Because there had been an epic that has been given out by Pharaoh that what, and he says in verse 22 of chapter 1, uh, he said, Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River, but you may leave the girls alive. That was, a, that was, he was born, actually, you could say he was born on the wrong side of the tracks. Because right away, with Jochebed carrying him, the ultimate end of his life from his mother's aspect would be death. That he was going to die as soon uh, as they bring him uh, from uh, the midwife. Matter of fact, when you look at it and you study it, Gosham really, uh, Ken was like a ghetto. It was like the ghetto. It was a difficult place to live in because slaves were there. They were being used and abused. And here Pharaoh was predicting male infanticide. Are y'all here today? Here, 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 here Pharaoh was preaching about destroying a little boy. Because I need to stop them because of the fact that I don't want any more of those slaves being born uh, unless I can control them. So Pharaoh, Pharaoh made this, made this decree that goes out and he, he did it. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, God always works in the scene and he always works behind the scene. Yeah, yeah, because you understand, since we're in chapter 1, I might as well go back because there's something in it I, I need to look at. And it's in chapter 1, uh, Ashami, in the verse 17 verse. It says, it says this, but because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders. And they allowed the boys to live too. <laughs> yes, the midwives refused to do what Pharaoh was, has instructed them to do. Now we got a problem going on because if the midwives don't obey uh, the decree, then the boys are going to live. You get to chapter 2. You got to chapter 2 of, of this Exodus, and right away uh, this uh, uh, Amrod and Jochebed now are having uh, another child. She, he's going to be the third child in the family. Aaron is living, Miriam is living. But you get to verse 2 of this text, and verse 2 says of chapter 2, the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And the Bible says in verse 2, she saw that the boy was a special baby. And I know every mother here uh, 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 say all of my children are special. But here... This text says that they saw something in Moses that he was special, he was extraordinary. Got to hold on to that, Corey, got to hold on to it because it means something that the text said that this boy, Moses, is going to be a special boy. Not going to be like everybody else. And, and since I have your attention, we might as well go, go over to Hebrews because it's going to help me preach this text. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. Oh, yeah, that's a twin to this verse. Look what it says. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to obey the king's command. Ooh, Moraine, what are you saying? Moses' mother said, had made up her mind that my, my boy is not going to be thrown in the Nile River. I don't care. And I know Pharaoh, what she's saying, Pharaoh, you may be the most powerful man on the planet, but you're not going to kill my baby. Oh, y'all, you, I, I, I don't care what you say, Pharaoh, you're not going to kill uh, my baby boy. I may have to lose my life but you're not going to kill my baby. The Greek word here for unusual means mean a stylus. A stylus means something that's unusual. 
it, a stylus means something that is extraordinary. Because, and understand, he knows this is going to be special because he's extraordinary and Moses is going to be a deliverer for his people. So you're not going to kill my boy. Because understand here, Marcellus, the text says understandably that what happens in the Greek text here is that we need to have somebody that's going to match Pharaoh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got, I, got, I got to bring somebody into the world that's going to match up with Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh is in charge. He's taking little boys out. But if I get somebody to match him, we'll take over Pharaoh's land. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, you know who knew that? Moses' mom and daddy knew how important he was. Because the Greek sentence in the text says, it, it, it started reading, because, because they were not afraid of the king's edict. I don't care what he says. He ain't taking my boy. I don't, I don't, care what he, what he, what, I don't know what he owned, but I'm going to put something else on it. If he try to take my boy, something going to happen to him. And I don't want to tell y'all this morning, you, you better be very careful when you got a fearless mama. Uh, those on the right, maybe I said that. Y'all may have heard what I said. You, you better not mess with a fearless mother. You, 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 you better be careful rolling up on a mother that's not afraid. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm not afraid. I, th these, are, these are my children and you, you better be careful because understand, I'm sure that when she laid there with Amrod and told him, listen, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant and he, and I'm sure he was afraid, didn't know what to do. The man was shaking in his boot. But this mother, this mother wasn't shaking. She said, no, Pharaoh. You can take some other boys, but you ain't bothering this one. Matter of fact, I'm not afraid because I know what the word says. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life and what I shall be afraid. When you have God on your side, mama can make it through difficult seasons in life. So be careful when you got a mama that's not afraid because she evidently she has something on her side that you cannot see. And I'm looking and looking at mothers right now that are fearless mothers. You've been through too much, come through too much to let somebody take your child out. So I come today to tell you this mother was a fearless mother. And, and you know, you know, you know, when you got a mother like that, you ought to treasure her beyond price. You, you can't put a price on it, a mother that is fearless. So I got three things I've got to say today in this little speech. Here's one, one is God requires that each mother provide protection. And, and then I'm going to talk about that God requires that each mother provide provision. And the last thing I'm going to talk about in this text is that God requires that each mother provides preparation. So all the same sinners, but different word on each sinners. One is, I need y'all to repeat after me, make sure y'all awake and not looking at your phone too close. Listen, protection, provision, and preparation. That's the requirement of every mother here that's in this building, everyone that's listening to me online, is that you must provide protection, provision, and preparation. Surrendering your, your children to God is the best decision that a parent can make. Because God reveals that although it was Moses' mother that birthed him, it was his mentor that positioned him. God knew that Moses' mother was not equipped to develop him into the leader he was ordained to be. To realize your purpose, you must survive some conflicted moments in life. Yeah, because your, your ancestors or past afflictions don't define your destiny. What happened to your foreparents does not have to happen to you. 
it's only continuing about you enduring the circumstances and withstanding what you go through in life. You are God's chosen vessel. Greatness resides in you. All of us here this morning. So mom, you are the child's protector. And as soon as Moses was born, the scripture says that, that, that the mother noticed something special about him. And she saw this special destiny that was on her child. Verse 3 says it this way, and when he, she, and when verse 3 uh, says it right here like this. It says, and when she could not, I preach, Melania, could no longer hide him, she got a basket, and she filled it with pitch, and she, she with reeds on it, she waterproofed it with tar and pitch. The basket in Hebrew really means tabar. It means she took a wicker basket. And she filled it with tar, put tar around it. So it's, she built it like Noah built an ark. Come on now, you. Noah, Noah built an ark, and everybody that got in was safe. She built this basket in the shape of an ark. She didn't just push it in current water. She positioned the little basket precisely where she wanted it to go. Y'all preach me. You, you. She, she, she made the basket, but she put the baby in it, and she watched what was going on. The Bible said she put it in the midst of some reeds. Now, I've never been to the Nile River, but I've been in some reeds. That means she put it alongside of the river so she could watch it while it went through the weeds. Oh, you, you, because I'm not going to let my baby, three months old, put him out in the river and let him float out there by himself. I'm going to put him in something that I can keep watch over him. Tell me what a mama won't do. I, I, I'm confident that this wise mother had identified certain uh, habits of Pharaoh's daughter. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all see the text. I, I know she had been watching Pharaoh's daughter. She knew at a certain time the princess came to bathe in the river. She knew at a certain time when that, when that daughter would be out there. So she made sure she put him in the basket along the reeds, and he would slowly migrate through the reeds, and Moses' mama was walking alongside. And the more she walked alongside, and, and, and I'll tell you one thing, I'm convinced, I'm convinced, you'll never convince me any different, that Jehokabet didn't rehearse the whole plan. Y'all got some mamas going to help me out here. Yeah, I, I'm convinced here, Isaiah, that she had already worked the plan up, and she had already talked to her older daughter named Miriam. And time and again, she was talking to Miriam, and she would tell Miriam, we, you, you got to stand for me. And I'm going to tell you, I know she told the girl what to say. It's just like a mama to have a plan and make the plan work. She said, listen to me. Make it. She said, Miriam, I want you to make it look like a surprise. Yeah, Miriam, I, I want you to make it seem spontaneous. Y yes, yes, yeah, yeah, baby, you can do it. You can, can do it. Matter of fact, I'll be standing right there. When you tell her what's going to happen, I'm going to be standing right there. You can do it. You can do it. Because mama going to be watching. And when that baby float up to, because I know about 12 o'clock she take a bath. And by the time that she get out there taking a bath, Moses going to slide in. And when Moses slide in, I want you to make sure you give her a message immediately. Life about, is about surviving the circumstances. Life is about you have to float. In, you got to float in an ark that can position you that you can swim in gators. You got to be able to, be able to have something that you can swim in. Eventually, 
Mama has done all she can do. Also, she has to turn the baby over to God. Moses' mother gave him something to make it when she's not around. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. She put him into something that would make him sail while others were sinking. Y'all going to make me preach longer than I want to. She, she, she put him in an environment that would destroy him, but it delivered him. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she gave him something that would float. Yeah, yeah that, that would just float. Because when you leave the house, you need to be in an environment that's going to help you float. Because you, you're going to run into, when you leave home, you're going to run into racial division. And you, you, you're going to run into racism. You're going to run into in social injustice. You, you're going to run into some oppression. Just because of the color of your skin, no expectation of greatness because what you look like. But I'm going to give you something that's going to make you float in life. Oh, yeah, I'm a mom while other children are sinking. Your child going to sail. Preach, Marina. While other children are being destroyed, your child going to be delivered. While other children are being destroyed on cocaine, you're going to give your child something that's going to help them float in life. And I came here to preach this morning to tell you, I can tell y'all some things that make them float. Are y'all here today? Because we know we do stuff. We give them stuff that make them float. We'll put them in sporting activity. And that's a good thing to be in. We'll put them in, uh, we'll play musical instruments. We'll give them, we'll send them to basketball camps and we'll send them to baseball camps and we'll, we'll buy clothes and put them on their back. That will make you float. Y'all, yeah, yeah, it'll make you float, will it? It'll, It'll get you good in a situation. They go to college by yourself. Leave home for the first time. And I'm telling you, you're going to need something more than something to make you float. Because everybody that plays high school ball don't get to the NBA. Every child that plays musical instruments in high school don't always get to be the greatest when they get older. So you're going to need something uh, that's going to be more than something that makes you float. I need something that's going to help me sail. Wish I had some people here today. And what's going to make me sail, Georgette, is relationship with Jesus Christ. When things get rough, when the road get heavy, you're going to need something uh, to help you sail in life. Because you ain't playing basketball no more. You ain't a basketball player no more. You're 35 now. You're going to need something that when trouble comes, uh, you're going to need somebody to stand by your side. Do I have five folk in here? Do I have five people here that can testify that you're going to need somebody on your side that's bigger than you are, larger than your mom and daddy, and maybe make it through life? Matter of fact, matter of fact, that's my first point here. It's about protection. And you know, you'll protect your children at all costs. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Mom and them, mom and them will protect you at all costs. They don't give up on you. No, they don't give up on you. No matter how, how bad you are. No matter how many times you make mistakes, mama them won't give up on you. They pray and cry. Somebody here that's been just like that. You prayed and you cried. You cried and you prayed. If some mamas in here can testify, said, even when you was in your crazy season, I cried and I prayed. Even when you're biologically, you acting a plum fool. I cried and I prayed because I'm going to protect you at all costs. No matter what's going to cost you, because let me say, we can't kill the boys. They might be a pastor. They might be the next president. 
they might be the next policeman. You can't kill the boys. We got to let the boys live to bring production in our community. Wish I had some help in here today. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, I thank God for Mama Nim. Ah, yeah, I, I thank God for Mama Nim. Can y'all say, I thank God for Mama Nim. I heard a story the other day uh, of this mother. Uh, I read it the other day, and she was her son, somebody at the church, at the church, was attacking her son. She said, oh, no. She said, oh, no, that ain't going to happen. She said, I'll, ki I'll, ki I'll kill a brick over my son. Yeah, she said, she started, as soon as she saw it ain't going to happen, she started taking earrings off. She started putting earrings off, started, started getting out of her shoes. Because, you know, right then, you know, they, they started taking earrings off. And they started making, they started putting a little Vaseline up under their eye. You already know it's going to be on here. I done got out of my shoes, and I'm not going to let you mess with my son. Matter of fact, matter of fact, it said when she, after the boy got grown, they reminded her that because she was a deaconess in the church. And they said, deaconess, are you going to do that? She said, yeah, I said it then, and I'll do it now. You ain't going to take, you ain't going to bother my son. Do I have any mamas in here today can testify that even when they are vulnerable, they're going to protect their children. They're going to provide, they're going to protect their children. Can I get six people in here? Matter of fact, six mamas in here and say, I kill a brick for my son. You, you, you can stand in here and say, I'll take you out for my son. Don't mess with me about my son. Are y'all here today? Our uh, dear brothers and sisters, as we, as we say here today, because when you protect your child, God will protect you. When you take care of God's business, God will take care of you. And I, I, I just want to say this unto my next point. When you do what God says, God will provide for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, Simon, if you go back to chapter 1, verse 20, look what these midwives done. I'm almost done. I ain't going to keep y'all all day. Look what these midwives did when they did not do what Pharaoh said. Verse 20 says, so after they didn't do what Pharaoh said, look what God did for them. So God was good to the midwives. And the Israelites continued, continued to multiply going more and more powerful. And, and because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Y'all, 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 y'all gonna miss this. Listen, I know that there are folk in here can say today that God will provide in spite of what I'm going through. That God will provide. And I know, yeah, yeah, he, he'll give you a little bit more when you make a sacrifice for him, he'll throw something in for you. Oh, y'all going to make me preach too long. Can y'all say protection? Can you say preach provision? A provision, he says in verse 5 and 6. Listen what he says here. He says in the Bible, it says, verse 5 and 6 says, the baby sister stood afore, verse 4 says, but soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river. Walk, the attendants walked along the river bank. When the princess saw the bass among the reeds, she sent a maid to go out there and get it. Look, you go out there and get that, uh, uh, get that basket floating out there. And when the princess opened it up, she saw a baby. The boy was crying now. She said she felt sorry for him. She didn't have no children. She felt sorry for him. And she said, it looked like a, one of them Hebrew children. It looked like one of them slave children. And look at verse, they said, listen, now, it look like a, it don't look like mine or my folk. But then the baby's sister came up to the princess. She said, can I go and, and, and find one of them Hebrew women to nurse that baby? Now, y'all will get it in a minute. Can I go and find that Hebrew woman and, Come nurse baby. Listen, I, I, listen, what I want to do is, George, and I want to trade off from mother to mentor. 
because it's, it's in turning Moses over to God. She ends up in a situation where Pharaoh's daughter has happened to be baby. And now she done went from mother to mentor. Moses' mother could not mentor him for the future because Moses' mother was a slave. Oh, yeah. Then, then another reason why she couldn't do nothing about it, because Moses' mother, uh, Moses was a deliverer, and Moses' mother was bound herself. <sighs> Y'all making it hard in here. You, you got to know when to back up. You got to know, mama, when to take your hands off a situation and turn that child over to somebody that can help you in this situation. You, you got to know, and I know, I know y'all don't ever want to let go, but sometimes you got to let them go and let God do what you can't do. You, you got to back up and say, no, I'd have done all I can do, and he won't listen to me, but I tell you what, if you back up, he going to listen to somebody. If you step back just a moment, because I'm telling you right now, you are his backbone. Every mom in here is a child's backbone. If you lose your backbone, your behind going to fall down. Mamas, y'all need to back up and maybe let him fall and find somebody that can help him when stuff gets tough. You keep paying all his bills. You, you keep feeding him and keeping him clothed. Sometimes you got to stop it and let him find his own way, and God will help him out. I'm going to preach anyway. I, I tell you, you, you got to know. Matter of fact, you got to know when to you shut your mouth and hold your peace and let God finish what you work. Oh, y'all, you, you, you see, uh, sometimes it wasn't a whipping I got. It was her mouth that got me, wanted me to say, lady, will you just shut up? That's why I say it under my breath. I ain't never came out with it, but, but I, I showed, I ain't going to say I didn't think it, because she would talk and talk and talk. And if you've been up all night, y'all have been up all night and been out all night long, and but they haven't been up, they've been asleep, and they're going to wake you up at 6 in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning, and you just got there at 5. Y'all didn't say anything. You, you just got in the house about five, but they don't care nothing about it. They still saying, I don't care where you've been, get your butter. I don't care what you've been doing, you're going to hear what I got to say. And they might put some adjectives with it that you don't want to hear. But I tell you, every nine then, uh, you got to get to a point that you got to back up and let them be. Let them learn. Provide. Why, a wise mother got to turn them over to God. Uh, let, let me go on and sit down here. One person may birth you. Grandmama may help raise you. But you got that. One person birth you. It might have been a stepmother that finished a job. But you got that. You made it because somebody helped you in life. Big mamas, we're losing all the big mamas in our community. And when we lose the big mamas, we lose the wisdom. Leaves the house. Sons and daughters in trouble and in jail because of a lack of a mama, lack of a big mama, and lack of a grandmother. Because I tell you, you, they help you raise them in the church. And they go to court and they'll keep them from the courthouse. And they'll keep them in the schoolhouse. Invite you to their house when you get old. Are y'all here today? You... You got to be careful because you get rid of grandmother because they might need, you might need them when they get old. Because I tell you, brothers and sisters, I'm thankful for my mama and my grandmother. Yeah, I'm grateful for what they've done in my life. I learned, lived my life around both of them. One grandmother lived in a house with us until she died. Until she was 90 plus years old, she lived right in the back room. It ain't so much of what she was doing, but the idea she was in the house. The idea I had somebody in the house 
that it knew more than I did. And, and she lived right in there until she was 90 years old. Never went to a nursing home. My daddy took care of her until she went to glory. And that learned, had learned taught me that I got to learn how to take care of the women in our lives. Will you take some out of hand? See, you got to learn how to take care of the folk in your family and bless them like never before. Priest Marina, I'm going to do the best I can. I, I see now y'all going to sit on me all day. But I come to tell somebody, we need mama them. We need them like never before. A, a teacher asked a boy one day, uh, one day Copeland, a question. He said, suppose your mother baked a pie and there were seven uh, sl slices to it. Uh, your parents and five children. What part of the pie would you get? He said, I'll get a six piece. The boy, the lady teacher said, I'm afraid you don't know your fraction. Uh, remember, I told you it was seven. Yes, the boy said to the teacher. He said, but you don't know my mother. <laughs> mother would say she didn't want any pie. Y'all will get it when you get home. Yeah, she, she, that, that's, that's, that's just how mama works. She ain't got to have nothing. That's how mama works. You, she'll make sure you fed, and she might not eat it all. Any mamas in here have made some sacrifices for your children? You didn't have enough to do, but what a mama won't do, I tell you, she'll do something like nobody else can and will do. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, as I get ready to take my seat, provision is what Moses' mother did. And then she had some supporting sisters, a supporting sister that made a difference. Every time Moses' life was saved, a woman did it. Y'all don't miss this sound. His mother, his sister, and Pharaoh's daughter. Everybody that delivered Moses, helped him on the way, was a woman. I don't have but one sister, and she took care of me, and she still will. All I tell y'all, don't mess with me, because you got to go through her first. And she can and will fight. She's from South Memphis. She might not be able to do too much. She's able, though. <laughs> All I know is you got to have somebody able to do it. Now she's walking on a cane. So that means she got some extra help. So just don't mess with me because you got to go through her. Can I get an amen in here? Matter of fact, y'all about to look around. You don't know where she is. And I come to tell you today right now to tell you, old Pharaoh wanted to kill the boy. I'm old, Pharaoh, what you messed up with, you messed up, you wanted to kill the boy, but the girls done got loose. Are y'all here? You are out here trying to take the boys out. These girls are bad now. Yeah. Go on, go on, Priest Moraney. They educators, they doctors, they lawyers, they scientists, they neurologists, they computer people. They bank presidents. They, they got cosmetologists licensed. You trying to take the boys after the girls and got loose. Now the girls doing stuff they didn't used to do. And I just call some of y'all out right now. I got some doctors in here. I got some educators in here. I got some lawyers in here. You say, I ain't none of those things yet, but I just spoke into your future. I just spoke into your future. You might not be it right now, but I just told you what you're going to become. Do I have any help in here today that the girls can be more than they ever been before? The girls are great in what they do. Can I get an amen for the girls in here? Can I get an amen on this side for the girls? Got educators, they got you got all kind of girls in here on the day to do something. Can I get the girls to wave in here and say so we are somebody? We are on our way to be better than we ever been before. I need some help in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm done. I'm done. Take the baby. 
I, and we got a mama over there, and, and, and let, let, let her, I got a slave woman over here, and she'll take him in and, and, and bless the child. Moses' mother didn't have the method. Uh, Moses' mama didn't have the money, but she had the mission. I thought y'all were going to get that one. Uh, she, she didn't have the method. She didn't have the money. But she'll not have the myth. Because understand, she took Moses and took him back home. And the scripture says, she said, okay, let the sleeping slave come and get the baby. And I'll pay her to take care of the baby. Isn't that something? She getting paid to take care of her own babies. <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all gonna make me shout in here. You tell me God won't make a way. You tell me God won't provide. You, you tell me God. Here, here, how many mamas in here would love to have somebody pay you to take care of your children? Are y'all here? You? Anybody here would love somebody just pay you? To take care of your children. I'm, I'm done. I had a little boy uh, run up to me. It might have been last week. He looked like he was about four years old. I was in, I was in Walmart. He ran up to me holding on to my pants. I said, Lord, now, now who, uh, who, who boy is this? Now he, I didn't see his mama, and he was holding on my pants. I said, Lord, we don't do that here. We, <laughs> I don't think that's going to work real well here. And, and, and his mama came up, ran from where she was. She said, I'm sorry. She said, but I didn't know why he had gone. I said, what? You, you need to keep up with your child. He out here pulling on my pants. And she said, I tell you what, he's just four years old. Do you want him? I said, oh, no. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't want him. No, 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 I don't want him. I, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at him. But he ain't going with me. All I said, no, 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 no. You, you need to get your baby. And you didn't find somebody going to take care of your baby because I ain't the one. Can I get anybody here to say amen in here? How many men that won't mind standing up and helping me testify? Are you looking for any four-year-olds? Look how fast some men jumped up. I'm done. I'm done. I said provision. You need protection because then you need preparation. Got to have pre the power of a mother's preparation. Verse 10 of the text says, if your Bible says later, later. Between verse 9 and 10, some years went by. Some time between verse 9 and 10. And between verse 9 and 10, Corey, Moses' mother had an opportunity to talk to him to raise him and teach him something. And while he, she had that Moses in her presence, she said, Moses, remember this. You're a Hebrew. You see those people out there hitting those bricks? Those your people. And I want you to remember, no matter where you go in life, those are your people. Moses, you're going to be the one that's going to deliver them from slavery. Oh God, I, mm, I, I, I just feel like screaming. Oh Moses, I know she talked to him. Steve, while she had the time, I had to mold him and, and make him into something. So I know you're living in, you're going to go back to Pharaoh's daughter and you're going to live in the palace. You're going to have money in your pocket and you're going to have cars to drive. But remember, your mama's a slave. Remember your, your ancestor are slaves. Remember, I want to teach you something that, that you don't forget where you came from. That you already remember how, how God brought you to where you are right now. Remember, I, I put you in a Nile River and you're still in my arms. And, and I want to teach you how to love God. The Bible says man's gift will make room for him. 
and I bring him to places. He's great people. Are y'all here today? Moses, you're going somewhere, and you're going to be somebody. And I'm a living witness today that your gift will make room for you. You don't have to make room for your gift, but your gift will make room for you. Can I get a witness here? I've been a lot of places. I've preached in a lot of churches, in churches larger than St. Luke. I've been in some places and pulpits I never thought I'd be in. I've been to D.C. I, I've been here to preach and there to preach because my gift made room for me. I didn't make room for my gift, but my gift made room for me. Are y'all here today? For the first time, Brianna, I rode in a Bentley. Yeah. They picked me up from the hotel in a Bentley. I know I won't ever ride by no Bentley, but they picked me up in a Bentley. Had a computer in the back seat. Are y'all here today? Because my gift made room for me to ride in something I'll never be able to buy, to live with people I'll never be able to live with. God will make room for you. Won't he do it? I'm almost done. Since y'all didn't come to shout, I'll shout myself. Because you get to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24. The Bible says, Moses remembers what his mama said. He said, years went on by. Moses had grown up. He went out to visit his people. And he saw his people in Hebrews having a hard time while they were working. And the Bible says, he saw them. And he refused to hang with Pharaoh folk. Because those was his people. Isn't he all right? Good morning, y'all. I don't know. I ain't, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not all that. When it come down to social media, I ain't, I ain't on all of that stuff. I, I'm sorry. I say. But my children taught me something. Uh about Instagram and all that other thing, whatever else it was. Yeah, and, and I had to ask Shaman to help me understand. Well, they told me to be on Instagram. You, every now and then, you got to be verified that you're on it. You can't be a phony and on it, I guess. I don't know. All I know is what they told me, the scooter told me, every now and then you have a blue check I don't know, the mark may come up to verify that you own it and you read it. Well, I said, well, I ain't verified, so I can't get on Instagram until I'm verified. He, he said, yeah, yeah, that's the way it works, Dad. That's the way it works. That's how it goes. That's how it's going to go. You can't get on. I said, well, I ain't got to get on no way. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I really don't care. But, but then he said, but I came to tell somebody today that God has verified me. And, and he, he, he's checked all the boxes. And I'm just going to call. I just sitting there in my office yesterday, and I sit there, and I start thinking about stuff that I, he done checked off. Now, you can stand if you want. You can sit if you want. First thing I checked off is Waymaker. Check. Miracle worker, check. Light in darkness, check. Pay your bills, check. Doctor in a doctor, check. Lawyer, check. Mother for the motherless, check. A company keeper, check. A friend. Stick closer than a brother. Check what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We have Jesus. Check. I got goodness. Check. I got mercy. Check. Weeping may endure, 
for night. Check the joy. Come in the morning. Check. I've been verified. Anybody here been verified? Can anybody here been verified? Can you stand on your feet today? If you've been verified, do I have any mamas here that you can check on? Any mamas here? If you can just wave your hand. I'll just go over my list one more time. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. Light in darkness. Pay your bills. He's a doctor. He's a lawyer. The mother for the motherless. Ain't he all right? He's a friend. He's a company keeper. In a lonely hour, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Ain't he all right? Can I get an amen? Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get any mamas in here that can wave your hand and say he will provide, he will protect you, and he'll prepare you? The door, the door, the door, the door is open. You can come. I might not be verified on Instagram, but I'm verified in heaven. God has taken care of me. And I thank God for what God has done for me. I'm down, I'll tell you, he'll be a doctor for you. I, uh, and I'm done. I really am this time. I went to the doctor Tuesday, Thursday, whatever day I went. And I've done wrong with it. Just time me to go. And I checked out. I checked out pretty good. As a matter of fact, I checked out real good. Yeah, yeah, help me say amen there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he said, man, he said, your heart, he said, what do you do? Your heart that good. I said, whatever it is, I'm going to keep doing it. Is it that good, doctor? He said, yeah, it's pretty good. He said, it's pretty good heart rate, good heart rate. I'm, I ain't going to sign about your heart rate. But then I, he, he started telling me about some stuff. He said, I, I'm looking at my chart, and, I, and I, I, I told you to go see a specialist about what you said may be going on with your hand. Uh, he said, did you go? I said, nope. I said, nope. I said, he said, I said man, that medicine like had me going backwards. I ain't taking it. I said, no. He said, did you go to the neurology? I said, nope. And I said, let me tell you something. I ain't going. Now, I hope he ain't listening to me. I'm trying to be smart, but I hope he ain't listening to that. He said, no. I said, no. But you just told me I'm doing all right. I said, I ain't going. Matter of fact, he said, I said, whatever I got, I'm going to take it to glory. <laughs> I'm going to take it right on to glory with me. He's okay, okay, go on out of my office. You okay, go on, leave. I said, hallelujah. Come on, y'all don't even know when to shout in here. I said, hallelujah. And I ain't got no medicine to take. I said, hallelujah. I want to think, I feel like running in here. I ain't got no medicine to take with me, and I'm still alive in here. Anybody here can just say amen in here. Come on, put your hand together and give God some praise. The door of the church is open today for you to come. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Door is open. You can come, Mama, on this Mother's Day and get it together between you and God. You're going you to need to give your children something to help them through life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will all the mothers stand? Will all the mothers come forth? All the mothers. If you're a mother, will you come? I don't care if you're not a member of this church. I said, all mothers. All mothers. All mamas. Oh, my God. Isn't God great here today? Come on. Y'all go home and wake up the men. Lord, have mercy. 
That's in every church. All mothers, all mamas, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Y'all come on. We want to bless all the mamas here. some order. Yeah, yeah.